Cricket presents The Warm Up. Thanks for joining us again. I'm your host, Neil Beasley. We are rocking and rolling in the Texas high school football season. So once again, it's time to get you warmed up for another week. Let's get things started by taking a look at some big time week two matchups in the Louisiana hot sauce hot zone. There's a doozy going on at Collins Complex Friday night. Denton Geyer hosts Alito and their 11 state titles. It'll be the second final game of the Bearcat Revenge Tour as they look to avenge their only two losses of 2022. Last year, Geyer went to Alito and took care of business with a 30-point win. However, the Bearcats never lost again, and the winning has continued this season as they beat Parrish Episcopal, the other team who handed Alito an L a year ago, and did it with ease. Hoss Haney didn't need to do too much to secure that win, threw for 185 yards and a pair of touchdowns as the Bearcats put a 50-burger on the Panthers. Racine Gilroy did most of the works. He scored three total touchdowns. However, Friday, Lito will need to be clicking on all cylinders when they face Geyer. Wildcats lost some stars to graduation, but new quarterback Logan McLaughlin found a favorite target in Josiah Martin. Two teamed up for a touchdown and 92 yards receiving against Rockwall Heath. As a team, Geyer ran for 420 yards on the night. To stay in a game against Toledo, the Wildcats will need to find a way to keep the offensive momentum, and that might be difficult. We'll see. Lovejoy visits Argyle this Friday as well. In case anyone needs a reminder of their matchup from a season ago, the two teams combined for 105 total points as Argyle won the shootout 56-49. Eagles have a very young team, as shown by their struggles in a lopsided loss to Melissa last week. Their offense made some strides in the passing game, but the Eagle defense simply got picked apart. That does not bode well when they line up against a super talented Leopard offense. Lovejoy put up 647 yards of total offense against College Station as Alexander Hundo Franklin threw for 368 yards and five touchdowns. Meanwhile, Parker Livingstone, the UT commit, Caught 12 passes for 252 yards and three scores. The scoreboard might get lit up again this year, but I'm not sure it'll be done by both squads. We'll see. The Hot Zone is presented by the original Louisiana brand hot sauce. With just the right amount of heat and flavor, Louisiana hot sauce has been a game changer for more than 95 years. Switch to Cricket and get four lines for only $25 each per month. Plus, fast nationwide 5G for all. Smile, you're on Cricket. Enjoy the authentic flavors of ancient recipes. So thin, so crisp, so good, so chill. We stop down to visit with Alito gunslinger Hoss Haney in the recruiting trail presented by So Chill Chips and Salsa. Hi, my name is Hoss Haney. I'm quarterback at Alito High School. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I had, I had quite a few options to choose from, all the really good schools that. You know, I had deep in my consideration, but, you know, I've grown up around TCU my whole life. Both my parents were TCU, and they were both student athletes. So that, you know, played a heavy part in my uh, decision to go to TCU, you know. And I grew up in the training room there, just going to all the sporting events. And we still, to this day, go to all the sporting events. And I'm a die-hard Horn Frog fan. And, um, you know, you know, it, it's a small world because Coach Bryles, when he was at Arkansas, my freshman year is when he started recruiting me as a quarterback and you know I went on a trip up there and you know did that sort of one-on-one -on -one visit and I threw for him and you know we really hit it off and you know that's when our relationship really sparked um, you know coach uh, Riley uh, took the job at um, Clemson and coach Browse walked in and it was like here we go like this is this is what this is what I dream about is an opportunity to play for a coach that I love and have a good relationship with but also for my dream school I've dreamed about playing for my whole life. And then Coach Dykes, you know, he's a great all-around person. And, and um, he's, he's really made it known that he wanted me to, me to be his quarterback in the future. My play style as a quarterback is, you know, I just take what the defense gives me, you know. Uh, some people who do, who have seen me play, know that I can use my legs, but um, that's when that's when I do what the defense gives me. If, if they're gonna, you know, drop eight and uh, you know cover things up, I'm gonna take off and run if I need to. And then, 
you know, we do a lot of zone reads at my high school and, you know, read different things. If they crash on the running back, then I'm going to pull it and, you know, go 60 up the sideline if I need to. And then really just being poised and patient in the pocket. And that goes back to just take what the defense gives you and just trusting uh, yourself as a player to, you know, it all goes back to preparation. So I make sure that I'm prepared for each game and comfortable walking into each game. So, yeah. You know, the special the special thing about playing at Alito is, is a, it's a town that I've lived in my whole life. And, you know, I've, grow, I've grown up playing Pee Wee Alito football, playing for Super Bowls in the county and stuff like that. And, you know, growing up playing with your best friends is something special because, you know, you go from the weekends playing in the backyard, playing two-hand touch and tackle. And then, you know, you know, you get to the age where you start putting the pads on and start playing for real. So I've been playing with this group of guys since I was six years old. And, you know, to go through high school and play for such a great program and, you know, with the community behind its back that supports everybody uh, within the program, you know, that, that's really what I'm going to miss about it is just that, that small town feeling and knowing everybody and just playing with your brothers and, you know, going through the blood, sweat and tears and all the hard work to, you know, hopefully play for a state championship at the end of each year. So that's really what I'm going to miss about is just being with my best friends. And, you know, I'm really just enjoying these last few moments with them and taking it all in and, you know, having no regrets, so yeah. You know, I want them to, yeah, I want them to think of me as a person who just cares about people people in general, and is just a humble leader who's gonna do the right thing um, and, and under the right circumstances. And a person, you know, who puts himself as a person before he is as a player. You know, without football, who am I? And who are people gonna remember, remember me as? So that's really the main thing is just like not walking up, walking around with my head high. Or I can walk around with my head high, but make sure to say hello to people who you like. Might not think I'm a person to say hello to them just because, you know, nobody knows who they are, but they know who I am. So, you know, just being kind to people is really what I want people to remember, remember me as. We can't get our cameras to all the big games, so here's some other games to keep an eye out for in The Hype, presented by Dallas County Connects. Friday night, Arlington visits North Crowley, which should be an interesting matchup. North Crowley is out to prove last year's 10-0 regular season was no fluke. They jumped on Sam Houston quick in week one and then coasted to a 69-13 victory. Athlete Cornelius Warren only needed eight carries to rush for 102 yards and a score, while Chris Jimerson threw for four scores. The Panthers want to show that they are the cream of the crop in 3-6A, and if they continue to dominate in non-district, teams will certainly take notice. Arlington sees 8-6A as wide open. They're trying to find out who they are before district play begins. Big win last week against Mesquite, as the Colts scored late in that game to pull off a 27-20 win. Scott Peach's running defense needs to tighten up against North Crowley as they gave up way too much yardage against the Skeeters. Saxe at Prosper has some intrigue to it as both teams were in serious tussles last week. Prosper won their game as they watched a huge halftime lead almost completely disappear. That against Trinity due to turnovers. Josh Martinez and Nathan Tenbarge each rushed for over 100 yards as the Eagles try to find their identity after losing a lot to graduation and adding a new coach. Saxe couldn't quite get in the win column last week as they lost to Coppell 44-41. Saxe outgained the Cowboys almost 200 yards but had two costly turnovers that were the difference in the game. Star receiver Kalik Lockett had five catches for 154 yards. He'll need more of the same if the Mustangs want to upset Prosper. You shouldn't have to come to the internet. The internet should come to you. Let Dallas County help connect your home with free or low-cost high-speed broadband today. Visit DallasCountyConnects.org. Here's a deal that's not too good to be true. Switch to Cricket Wireless and get a new Samsung A14 5G for the low, low price of free. Smile, you're on Cricket. Let's take a look back at who won our defensive title belt, plus who might be in line for one this week in The Buzz. Mansfield Timberview starting their season off right last week by pitching a shutout against South Grand Prairie. The Wolves gave up only 154 yards and caused two turnovers in the 35-0 season opening win. This week, keeping an eye on another Mansfield ISD team to win a title belt. 
Summit is all in this year after having a rough start in 2022. Lake Ridge couldn't get anything going against the Jags in week one. They only scored seven. This week, Summit has Mansfield High, who embarrassed them last year. So it's for the Jags defense to step up to the challenge. That's going to do it for today's show. Hey, thanks for joining us. And we hope you are warmed up for another round of Texas high school football.